Oh, this is hard. <laughs> take the wheel, Jen. Take the wheel. Take the wheels. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to Lords of Film. We um, are, me and Bradley are going to be talking today about Bradley's short film. We've got Roy over here. He's going to be on the sidelines today. So <laughs> I'm going to try my best not to say anything. Like, no, interrupt. He is. Interrupt. Okay. Anyways. Looking at the camera right here, like this I'm is the snake pit in an alternative universe. Yep. I'm the main host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Bradley is also, he's a co host as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he's our, he's Jamie. When we get a yeah. chance, <laughs> most of the time when it's, uh, just one guess, he's got the mic, but when we have two guests, he can't, so mm -hmm. you have to hear his ass in the background. I just sound all muffed in the background. But you background. can hear pretty good. <laughs> this episode, you'll be able to hear him really good. So. Yeah, so we're really excited to have him on. Um, he released a short film back in... Uh, about two... Well, it was... I filmed it in uh, summer 2020, okay. and then we completed it in October 2020, mm -hmm. and then I submitted it to uh, film festivals, and that was a long process because it was during a time when film festivals weren't going on, mm -hmm. so no one really got to see this until... Um, you know, because well, when we completed it, we we did have a we had a screening in October 2020 mm -hmm. with just a few close friends, and um, finally it got accepted to a few a few film festivals, and mm -hmm. just recently a, a majority of people got to see it. Okay. So, so like, were there like such things as like virtual film festivals that you could enter, or was like is that there, kind of pointless? There was, but it was during a time when a majority of the film festivals had already passed. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of, a lot of them were already selected. So oh. I had to wait at least another six months to a year to finally get to be able to re-enter so, essentially. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And I didn't release it on YouTube just because a majority of these festivals, if you release it on YouTube, you're automatically disqualified. Yeah. You were mentioning that. I guess it has to kind of be like, you couldn't really release it until you were like, you felt complete entering mm -hmm. content, not contests, but like film festivals and stuff yeah. like that. So um, we essentially kicked your ass to release this film. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and I'm really glad that we did um, because have you gotten a really good response in it? Have you gotten, you know, really good feedback on it? Yeah, I have. I, I know you got like a lot of views like your first day. Yeah, I did. Um, I honestly think it was the right time, mm -hmm. honestly, to release it because, uh, since then, I've gained um, a it's lot been of. Out for what, like two, three weeks? Yeah, I would okay. say three weeks. You released this month. Yeah, in January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But honestly, um, you know, because being on this uh, this podcast, mm -hmm. I've been able to meet more people, so it's been able to be spread out to more people that mm -hmm. that we've met on here, and then just other you know mutual friends. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah, when we watched it back in September, we watched it. 2021 mm -hmm. at the Flatland Flatland Film, Film Festival at Flatland yep. Film Festival at the Luca. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't really knowing what to expect. I know it was kind of a thriller, but it was really fucking cool. And it's really short. It's a really lean short film, but there's a lot of story. It kind of gets a little political, you know. And there's like a lot of you know metaphors mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But also, like, w would you consider yourself like a fan of like thrillers and horrors and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, that's one of the big you know main genres that i'm into do you think, like you kind of had like direct inspiration you know when kind of shooting it like one of like my favorite parts of this there's like a a scene where essentially like a grid pans out of like different ca camera angles uh -huh. and it gave me very like hitchcock you know vibes mm -hmm. or you know even like giallo vibes and stuff like that well you know um that the the person that did come up with that that idea mm -hmm. was my editor. His name uh, is David Burris. Credit to him. Okay. Uh, I would have not been able to accomplish that because he was the <laughs> one that put all you know How, all like, the so work like, into is that, that. Like with it being such a short film and it being so lean, do you kind of have to like sacrifice like certain types of like shots? Because it's like that had to be like. I guess kind of time consuming to film all those different angles. I'm sure it was very time consuming because looking back at the film, there's so many things that I would have done differently. Mm -hmm. But the the biggest challenge for this was, um, you know, because after we completed a film, we had all the time in the world to complete it, mm -hmm. you know, post post production. But 
while filming this, what was tricky about this was uh, we had a span of two weeks to actually complete this because. Okay. Um, and was the, this like filming or was it like. Just filming okay. because uh, that the, the lead actress, uh, Nina Stewart, mm -hmm. uh, she was someone that or she, uh, we had a, we had an acting class together uh -huh. and she was the one that I had wanted. And if I didn't get I wasn't able to have her a part of the film, I don't think I would have ever done it. Really? But when I did it, when I reached out to her, she said, I would love to do your film, but I have to let you know that I am moving uh, back to Dallas in um uh, uh, in four weeks. So oh, wow. pretty much we had two weeks of preparing for this and then two weeks of completing it. And so pretty much whatever we had on film, that was what we had to work with. Okay. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. But also kind of shout out to her because I can't imagine like being that busy. And then yeah. she was just kind of like knocking out like a short film. Because we filmed, uh, I honestly want to say uh, the day before she moved, uh -huh. uh, we had shot her, her final scene. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, because the, the main reason why, because when I wrote this film, um, uh, you know, the, the, the character in this film, she's, she's deaf. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, um, was that intentional? That was already written. Well, I, I have written that before I really got to know her. Uh -huh. And so when, when I was thinking of who I should cast, mm -hmm. she was like, uh, she was the one person that, uh, popped in my head. Cause you know, cause Nina, she's deaf in, in real life. Right. And, I think the main thing that I wanted to do was like, I wanted to be respectful of that. And, um, with her coming in, I wanted someone that was true, like in that community and represent that community. Well, right. And so once she was joined in, I was like, okay, it's a go. And like then we finally did it. Yeah. Selling essentially. Mm -hmm. So it was going to be authentic, but also it wasn't done like in a disrespectful or like tasteless way, mm -hmm. you know, cause like, not that it is, but I can imagine it could be kind of controversial to just have somebody act, you know? Yeah. And that was the one thing, because if Nina didn't do it, I probably would have still made this. Or like, would you have maybe had to like tweak the plot I, softly mm -hmm. to like, because if, so. if Nina didn't do it, I probably would have just uh, casted a regular, and just like uh, the a regular idea. act. Yeah. I would just come. But looking back on it, I don't know, because that kind of adds so much to this. It's a it's a big yeah. element in the mm -hmm. film. That's kind of why it has like that really like creepy. It, it's I think it's 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 why mm -hmm. you know it's like so stressful a film yeah. to like watch. Yeah, you know what I mean because it's like fuck. Because you know because you know, in this film I mean we focus a lot on that because uh -huh. when we you know see her you see the you know her hearing aid from the get go right. and when she doesn't have it in the audience knows because there's a close up of her hearing aid like mm -hmm. off to the side right so it's like damn she'll yeah. to get it well like, and it, it really pushed us more creatively especially with David Burris uh he did a phenomenal job with the audio mm -hmm. cuz the audio sounded you know cuz in it sounds great you know especially when you when you're uh watching it on your uh on your phone with your headsets mm -hmm. but during the film festivals it sounds so great oh, yeah. in theaters too yeah. yeah no it was like it was a great quality film mm -hmm. yeah. um are we gonna play it yeah 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 okay so we'll just watch so, so we're gonna kind of have this film play in the background and we're i guess gonna do like a soft commentary on it yeah so i guess you know the political side that is the main thing so did you come up for this plot because you said that you shot this in the summer of 2020 so it's like it was mainly COVID, like peak covid but like did you write this like during like quarantine like when everything was like happening like you know the idea came to me uh during spring break actually okay. yeah. i was supposed to film this for a class but classes ended up getting canceled in person so we didn't get to, to film this like I had wanted to. So it was shelled for a long time. And during the summer, I just picked it back up and finalized it. And we just, you know, just got it on film and put it all together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, there's so much that just goes into this. Like, you know, pretty much it doesn't really 
there's not a lot like it, it doesn't really tell you f- f- what's really going on we don't really know a lot about these characters it's kind of it's kind of for interpretation you just kind of take it was like it is because you just guess mm-hmm. kind of i yeah. like that when you don't tell too much because you know we filmed this at my parents uh uh, this is where I live now. At the time, I was living uh, off campus, you know, um, uh, close to tech. So my parents let me come out and shoot. And we filmed this during the summer. And what was tricky about this was sunset didn't happen till 930. Yeah. And so by 10 o'clock, we, that's when we would start shooting. And so did you guys do like overnight shoots? Yeah. Like there were some nights where we didn't get to com- complete it until like three thirty. I was going to ask you, how'd you, what did your parents do while you were filming? My dad was very involved. Like mm-hmm. he would watch us, of course. Oh, Mom, they were at, they were on location. Yeah. Actually? Cause the, the house. So I actually live in this house. This is the house next door to where my parents actually live at. Oh, okay. So this is the house that I live in. So pretty much I just got, you know, cause it was said during the time where, you know, no one was really letting anyone use their house for filming because right. they didn't want anyone just to come. Cause there was about six, seven of us on set. So it took a lot of, you know, cause that was a different time. Do you have any close neighbors? Uh, we do. So what's interesting about on location is I wouldn't be able to film this now because across the street, uh, it was a con field. Well, now it's all brand new houses. And it's all bright and cars are passing by all the time. And so it literally happened that quick. Yeah. It happened that quick. Yeah. Holy shit. Cause it was just a place in the middle of nowhere and it turned into this. So that's cool. And I think that kind of like, cause like this in a way gives me like strangers vibes, Uh you know? And so I think that's why I liked it so much. And so it kind of, you being kind of Mm -hmm. rural, rural, rural and dark, it just kind of adds to that. Cause I guess people who aren't familiar with this area, like they're probably like, they would probably think it's in the country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a country setting. Well, you know, and uh, the the main, uh, the lead actor, Demodric Tucker, uh, I've known him for years. We went to high school together and we played football together. Uh, but, you know, I had this idea because I, I knew from the get-go I wanted the lead actor to be a person of color because I think one inspiration that came to mind was um, – uh, Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Because at that time, the the main character is a uh, is a person of color as well. So right here, right. I wanted to, how were, were they just both okay with? Were they oh in yeah, relationships because they just kissed. That's what. I mean. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so interesting thing, Demodric, uh, his girlfriend was on set, and um, pretty much I just you know I mean I was I was. You know, I was, I was professional about it. I just said, look, there is a kissing scene. Uh, not only he's in a relationship, but it was set during the pandemic. So I was oh, like, yeah, you know, because as long as they were OK with it, you know, <laughs> I mean, they were fine. You know, when it comes to acting, yeah. you kind of just have to do, you know, for the art, you know. But like COVID was awful at that time. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. So, but you know what? I actually didn't want to act in this. I was going to ask you, like, did you write this because Roy wants to write a short film? And he wants to be in it. Uh And like, did you write this intending that you were going to be in it? And obviously, no, I had actually wanted to cast someone, but I couldn't find anyone because it was during the summer and all the tech students were gone. Right. And, you know, I just it kind of just had to do what you had to do. Just had to do it. Yeah. Okay. But but was it (laughs) but was it kind of fun playing the bad guy? Yeah, uh, you know, because because you know me, because I'm such a menace, right? So, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it uh, it was fun. Um, you know, I learned a lot and doing this film, and I was a part uh, of a group that was very creative, and a lot of things were, you know, were that came forward mm-hmm. like at the moment. So. So like you you wrote this, you directed it and everything like that. Uh-huh. Um, how was it like, would you say that you were like the head of like this crew that you worked with? Um, I would say, yeah, I guess so. But 
David Burris, who was also the editor, mm-hmm. he was technically my assistant director. So you guys, it was a joint. It was group. pretty much a joint. And so is that hard, like creatively to like compromise and to like create together? No, I feel like if you're with a group where- Was like, there any compromise or were you just like, was everybody okay with what you wanted to do? Yeah. I think, because uh, there were a few times where I felt like people, like I wanted it a certain way, mm-hmm. but there was a few things where- they were like, look, like if you want it this way, it's not going to work. So we had to like change certain ideas for it to to work for continuity and everything like that. So everyone had an input. And that was another thing that I wanted everyone to have was because I feel like if you have a, a film and, you know, not only you're representing your art, but mm-hmm. everyone that's a part of it, they all have a little piece. Yeah. You want to make sure that they get like represented correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have like. Because it's still, I guess, like with it being a joint effort, you still want them to be able to like have something to like, yeah, be like, this is my work. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> excuse me. But yeah, um, this was, uh, <laughs> uh, and another thing about this was this was during the summer. Uh huh. And oh my gosh, uh, (laughs) because I think the two weeks that we filmed it during the day, uh, during the day, it was uh, 115. Yeah, that summer. It was like a record. It was like a record breaking summer. And so when it came night, Uh it was still like 95. It was still like 95 degrees. I remember that. Like in the morning, it was Mm -hmm. just. You didn't get no fucking cool. It was hot. Yeah, it was still like 95. And I had, yeah. I, of course, I'm wearing a long sleeve. I'm wearing a, a, a scarf. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had the scarf over my face and everything. And for the audio to work, you have to turn off the ACs. Oh, shit. So, and then Nina, she's laying on the couch right there. Uh-huh. And oh my gosh, I'm sure it was very hot for her because she had to lay there for a little bit while we got everything set. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at that. But, yeah, uh, pretty much. I just knew the outlet of what my house and just, was this intentionally placed or was this that was already there. I kind of just it just worked. It, I guess. it just worked because I saw that, and then there's like a ready to die thing that I saw too. Yeah, that was already there as well, but it kind of still represented just like, worked. Yeah, now, the gun was it just a, like a little BB gun? It was a pellet gun. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because uh, was it I, heavy to pull? I was about to ask, was that difficult to drag it? <laughs> I mean, even though he's, I mean, he looks like a big dude. I mean, he's I don't big. want to say he's skinny, but he's very muscular. But he's he's heavier than what he, he looks. Dense. He yeah. looks very very dense. He, he's he's heavier <laughs> than what he looks. Yeah, dense. <laughs> I mean, but you know, it's, no, it's like a block, like a fucking block, just. <laughs> but yeah, Nina was fun to work with. Uh, we we went to the the Lost River Film Fest in Lockhart, Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went together and talked about this film, and uh, yeah, I, and you're all, y'all were at the Flatland, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. That's ready to die. That's pretty cool. Has he say. gone to any festivals with you guys? Has he been able to? No, he uh, he wasn't able to, but um, you know, he he still was very supportive and yeah, putting all this together. And yeah, I just, I overall, I just had fun doing this. This seems like a hard thing, like just to sit still. <laughs> that, right. like not look like and, and believe it or not, yeah. behind the camera, be so behind camera, there was just five of us standing just right above. Him. Yeah. See, this, this shot is so fucking cool to me. This is what you were talking about? Yeah. What marker is this? I want to see what some people know. What, so, what at what it? point? So that was about nine, nine. minutes and 45 like nine, seconds. Yeah. You know, that's the one shot that bugs me the most was we put... So for blood, we used chocolate syrup and we put it all over her hands, but we did not put it on the Modric shirt. So it's like pure white and then her hands are on. Yeah. It's fine. But yeah, uh, I also like to focus on all the artwork that was already in the house. Like, you know. So you didn't have to make any adjustments here? Like, or not you- really. Uh, there were a few things, but uh, I kind of left everything as it was. But inside that house, it looks completely different now. But yeah. Um, was it, sorry, I was, I was waiting for my car alarm to start going <laughs> No. Off. But yeah, this was... Uh, I can't wait to shoot you know, my next film because I did have such a good time doing this and putting it all together. So let's talk about that. Um, how is that going? Because I know at one point you've been talking... You've been talking about it since... Mm-hmm. 
it's like summertime you know what i mean so yeah. like how long of a process is that like with this like once you stop shooting how long was like editing before you started kind of like well um because like because we finished it early august mm -hmm. and uh the final version of this film is what you're seeing right now um wasn't complete until october okay yeah so even though it's a short film take short films still take a lot of time to work with i'm sure even just kind of clipping this all together yeah and everything this was actually the most challenging scene just this little part um just getting it right because she walks off and then i'm parked down the street mm -hmm. turning off right and then taking off and then just trying to get it the right angle right. to where because you know Especially there because you want it, you want it to seem like the truck is going fast towards her, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you don't want to run over her. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, so and we had five different people standing behind here because she's laying on the hot concrete. We have a towel under her uh -huh. doing this. I wouldn't even think about that. And uh, Jesus. that shit didn't I, go She was probably laying there for a good 45 to an hour. And so I drive off to get this shot. And so, um, cause to get it right, I had to go reverse to, to make sure the shot was good. So everyone was like, do not go backwards all the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot of little things. So like off to the left, uh -huh. there's nothing. Now it's all filled with new houses now. That's crazy. And it used to be where no one would drive down that street. Uh -huh. And now it's like busy traffic now. Just people. I remember Damn. when I exit out before something else yeah. started. So when. Oh. So now that you're you're talking about, you know, <laughs> your new film or like your next one, stuff like that. Um, how much of that do you have like developed so far? Or like how is that process? I do have a, a part of a script done, but I have the main points that I need to just put all together and make sure it makes sense. Are you do you have a goal a goal of it being like ten to fifteen minutes as well, or do you want to go a little bit longer? I wanna a little bit shorter. I wanna um it's still gonna be classified as a short film, mm -hmm. but it, it's gonna be an hour long. What okay. classifies yeah. it as a short film? Uh, an hour um, anything under an hour. So oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything above um, more than an hour is a feature film. So nice. I'm but, excited, but I'm excited uh, to, to see kind of what you do with it and do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 <laughs> I think the because I was still in college when I did this. Yeah. But the only difference is, is like, you know, life kind of gets in the way after college. Making time yeah. for it. Making time. Were, were you working when you did this? Like, did you have another job? I did. I mean, at the time I was working at varsity bookstore while oh. I was going to tech. So I was able to have more time, oh, you know, okay. but, uh, since then, like I moved to Dallas, I moved to Dallas and I moved back and then, you know, I just been trying to just get, Certain, I've just been working little by little to try to get it done. Now you said you didn't want to be in it. So what 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 is your strongest skill like in all of that in doing this? What would you say? Uh, my strongest skill, I would say, was like the most you brought. That's why I'm just wondering, like, was it everything, or because you didn't want to be in in it? So I think the writing was probably my strongest element out of all this. Um, I knew what I wanted. I, I had a good group that understood what I wanted. So I didn't really have to do too much so-called directing because uh, everyone understood the assignment and, you know, they busted their ass. And I love that. And I think writing was probably my biggest, strongest element that I had overall. Because, you know, when it comes to acting, I think for me, you know, with it being a, I guess, more political side, um, because it's kind of advertised that it's about like, you know, racism and all that, and, you know, but everyone always asks me, how come you're playing it? How come you're like, it's not a white person playing it. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I kind of wanted to change it up. And I, I don't like the, in films, I don't like the, the, the white savior stereotype in film, but I also don't like the evil white person that right. certain films do. Right. Uh, it's kind of a reminder that it's more than just white people that are so-called racist, yeah. you know, like, 
hell, I've met, you know, people that are, you know, Mexican and the Hispanic race that probably are almost just as racist as the most racist person can be. So that's a reminder saying that, Hey, it's not always the white people that are the so-called bad guy and things. Right. It's almost like you're hating the wrong group when there's just a little bit of everybody who Mm -hmm. has a very, anybody can be racist. Yeah. Yeah, And yeah. And because with this film being set at the time that it was, it, the the George Floyd incident and then the Breonna Taylor that has some influence to do with it, yeah. And I think this what this film represents is I, I've been telling everyone that it's it's a um, it's a symbolization of the struggles of being in an interracial relationship because mm-hmm. not only you have to deal with so called racism, but it also deals with the, like- the the struggles of expectations or like those like those microaggressions that people just have towards interracial couples Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i think that's kind of that's something that i kind of just picked up on it Mm -hmm. as well it's just there really was no point to them being you know what they went through in the film you know what i Mm -hmm. mean and so it's just it's a it's an aggression that's just unneeded well and on top of that um you you know because I've I've had friends with so many different races, uh, you know that that are so many different races, and you'd be surprised how many, like how similar a lot of us actually are. Mm-hmm. And and on top of that, you know, if you're like, I've seen so many things where, because I say expectations, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, struggles when it comes to families, because mm-hmm. you know. If you're in a racial, because like my two older brothers, they're married to, um, you know, to to two uh, to two white girls. Okay. And so there's a lot of there are certain differences when it comes to that too, because you know, um, just by you know, you know, because for us, for us Mexicanos, you know, we we've had to work all our lives to. To, to support ourselves and to keep ourselves like going, you know, cause we have to live. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we didn't grow up having, um, you know, so-called like trust funds mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so I think this was just me bringing out certain things that I've noticed growing up mm-hmm. of like how, how there are differences between us, different cultures, you know, Okay, yeah. if that makes sense. So, I don't like, know if, so it, it was, do you, would you say it was like a more like directly, like just political approach to the film versus mm-hmm. you just like intending to make like a thriller? Yeah. Okay. So, but you know, of course I still wanted to make the thriller cause that is one genre that I do enjoy a lot. Oh yeah. And I like, I like a good suspense film, a good thriller, yeah. like, you know, just, those are fucking yeah, you could just a good whodunit. empty-mindedly watch that and be like, that was a good mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, you don't even have to listen to this and be like, oh, that was great. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's only like 12 minutes long? 13? 13, yeah. 13 minutes long. It's it's <laughs> a very lean film, but there's so much story packed into it. And it's oh, yeah. Because cool. when I released it, I didn't really t- explain to anyone what it really truly is about. Because mm-hmm. most films you watch, you can watch it and love it for what it is. Mm-hmm. But when the director talks about it, you're like, okay, I didn't take it like that. But right. I under- I see why. Right. But but it's just kind of like there's like it's almost like there's like lots of like roads you can go down with it. You know, with mm-hmm. it being a thriller, with it being like an interracial couple film. So, you know, that. But also with her being deaf. You know, and just it just being a very isolated area. You yeah. know what I mean? So there's just so many avenues that that film goes down. Mm-hmm. So. It's a, uh, I, I just, you know, I would also say too, just with this film, I had a good time doing it. And, you know, I learned a lot from just, you know, I feel like when you do a film, it, it kind of humbles you a lot too, just by. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, like, why do you say that? I guess just because, you know, you know, I love film mm-hmm. and doing it. You know, I think there's so many people that that or that get into this field and, and they do it. They don't realize how hard work it can, still can be. Mm-hmm. You know, you could love you know what you know what you do, but there's still a lot of heart and soul that could be put into it too. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like it's. I'm pretty sure it's like one of those things of like what's in once it's like in action once it gets going it's like oh fuck I really have to do this I yeah. really have to like see this through through and like you want to deliver excellence you mm-hmm. know so it's like 
you have to be picky and you can't half-ass anything i'm yeah. sure so especially like the audio because even after we filmed it we went back and we had to record audio so it would match mm -hmm. uh you know because like little thumps and footsteps like did you guys have to like recreate those at all oh well, like a lot of sounds that we did like the footsteps uh because I love we, watching like behind the scenes, like videos of films and like the way that they like create like auditory, uh -huh. you know, shit is like, it's really cool. Have you seen those videos? That one movie where the things hear noise uh, with John Krasinski, you know what I'm talking uh -huh. about? Oh, like, uh, they use like vegetables to make noise. Like I've seen like some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just think it's really cool. Like, it's just weird shit to make sound. So if that's ASMR, I guess I like ASMR. So one thing but. we did, because uh, the oh, scene please. where Nina... Yeah where nina's character walks back and finds her um finds reggie dead mm -hmm. she's uh her bare feet is walking on the tile so me myself i got my bare feet and david and riley golden they held them a, a mic towards my my feet and to get that sound Ew. yeah <laughs> you but yeah your feet yeah riley just has a pretty much <laughs> skin. pretty much yeah and like the the sound when um <laughs> when i said <laughs> no you're good peter is so funny to me but like the, the the sound like the thud when mm -hmm. they notice something's in the back pretty much i think we got a, a hubcap uh -huh. and we just dropped on the concrete and that was the sound of that oh wow yeah. and you'd have to do all this post production yeah all that's post production because i mean you don't you don't really know what because it has to match what you film oh, okay. so nice i'm just taking pointers and then uh all, all the audio um some of it is the the og audio but since it's like a low sounding like you know because they're they're signing to each other but they're whispering but when you use the 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 og audio it didn't sound as clear as what we had hoped so so we got a mic and um they watched the film and just recorded them over their voice oh wow. yeah so there was a lot of things that we put together on this what were your thoughts when you first watched it? I like I'm kind of with you. I had no idea what to expect. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I think I have to like give context. It was a lot of great films before yours. Oh yeah, there was. So like a lot to be honest, Spoon one was so, so to be, <laughs> so, no, I say that because to be honest, I was like, fuck. I, hope, I was. This is my thought. I was like, fuck. I hope this is good because that's that was some good shit. And then I was like, oh damn, it really was good. It really matched it so everybody good. else's. So I was like, that's cool, man. Oh, I was thank like, you. I was like, damn, that's. It was inspiring because that's one of the huge inspirations of watching. I was like, damn, I want to do that. It was cool. I'm like, damn, I like that. I was pretty I, nervous too. Because like when y'all showed up, I was like, oof. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like I knew, you know. Supporters, supporting the homie. Yeah, I appreciate y'all for going out too. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, and me and Nina, we got to talk after the, sh the screening too. And that was just so cool, you know, because it's just like you – speak about you know like your love for like lubbock and film and you know kind of what you do and everything but it was really cool to see you like in your element you know what i mean so that would, like we were like it's our little brother yeah you know yeah, like, we were cool. just so proud of it really you. was cool well, it, so because well for the short films and flatline film festival there was two blocks uh -huh. and the block was like the next day Mm -hmm. And uh, I had wanted my film to show on the second block, mm -hmm. but it actually worked out because uh, the one that we showed, none of the other filmmakers had showed up. Mm -hmm. So me and Nina had the whole stage together because oh, wow. when I went that next day to watch that one, uh, there was like seven filmmakers there, and they only had like probably 30 seconds to talk about their film. And that was it. So you had more of like an open floor. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. That's awesome. And I was also interviewed. Oh, uh, by KCBD for no this, way. yeah. I think you posted that. Yeah, I had posted yeah. about that. Yeah, because um, they had wanted to market the the Flatland Film Fest, mm -hmm. so I got um, hit up by one of the reporters, and she uh, interviewed me at at my house. Nice. So <laughs> I have I to, to ask Bradley, it. what what made you? Even, I mean, maybe there isn't an answer. What fucking took you so long to release it post? <laughs> flatland uh i don't know it it just of course i was waiting for all the film festivals uh to complete yeah post that though like, post that yeah started bothering you about it like <laughs> it took you so long to do i don't it. know i just didn't feel right like posting it for some reason and then but like i said when i did it i think it was 
the best time I could have ever done it. Yeah. Because, you know, you know I, I know it's not much. I mean, I, I think there's like 240 views now, but I think if I had released it like a while ago. But that's 240 I, views. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. Because really I, cool. I honestly feel like yeah. it would be almost half of that if I had released it in October or something like that. So. But I'm I'm just glad you did. I'm glad we hounded you to do it. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. Um. So, you guys watched Scream without me because I had COVID. <clears throat> yes, I sir. had the COVID. Um, we had intended to do a Lords of Film over Scream Five or like just like this Scream. Um, but I got COVID. And then that was like two weeks ago. And then we I watched it like a week later. And Yeah, we watched it opening night. Yeah. With Juan. So parts of it have slipped my mind. But since we are just kind of here hanging out and this is Lords of Film. Thoughts? Thoughts? Because I, I fucking loved it. it. It actually surprised me. Um, did you go into it with like high expectations? Or were you just kind of... Did you think it was going to be cheesy? Or like what were your... I just thought it was just... You know, because the the sequels aren't that great. I like you know? Scream Two, and I I love Scream Four with Hayden Panettiere. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not I'm familiar. I'm not familiar with Number Three. Yeah, I, I just I didn't really expect too much because you know. Had you seen all the other ones besides the first one? No. So here's the thing. <laughs> they're not as memorable. But well, well, here's the thing. Uh, I've seen the first one mm-hmm. for a while, mm-hmm. but before I went to go see it. I watched uh, uh, I watched a YouTube vi- I watched a YouTube video explaining every film, mm-hmm. so I knew the what. Plot. So I pretty much know what it, what they are. Right. And Sydney Prescott can't get a fucking break. <laughs> That's the plot. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> but like you know, I was was caught up uh-huh. because you know it was just one of those things where I was like, man, do I really want to watch Scream two, three, and four? And so I ended up watching the, <laughs> Jin, you know, Jin gave you the homework, man. You didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up watching that, but <clears throat> I was actually really surprised by it though. Uh, I actually, I, like I, I really enjoyed I it. I like it. Cause you know, they always say the first one is like, um, a parody, but I never took it as like a parody. I always took it as like a actual serious mm-hmm. horror movie, but this time it really is like tongue in cheek and it really does. See, and I take the first one. I take all of them. Like, they're, like, just tongue-in-cheek because it's just, it knows what kind of film it is. It knows it's a slasher, a teenage slasher at that. And it was just kind of done in the 90s. So, it's, like, it was, like, the end of, like, that really, really cool, like, film, like, era mm-hmm. of, like, those 90s slashers. So, it's just, like, teens in high school having sex. You know, yeah. there's a mass killer on the loose, you know, so it knew what it was. So it always kind of made fun of itself. Mm-hmm. But I really like Scream 5 because I, I I didn't know um, necessarily. I didn't watch really the trailers. I only watched like one like a year ago when it finally dropped or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't I didn't look into it too much. So whenever I watched it, I really had like, just like a fresh mind. Like it, it was just a fresh watch for me. Yeah. And I really liked it. Um not a lot of Sydney Prescott, but enough Sydney Prescott. Mm-hmm. She's a fucking angel. I love her. Um, but it was really cool how it kind of there's there's twists, you know, in it. But it was like predictable, Are you but really fucking this fun. One? Is this a spoiler? I don't know. Should we? I, I kind of want to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I really I really like that they tied in Billy Loomis. You know, as, I was gonna say that. Yeah, I really I really liked that. Um, I was really fucking sad about Dewey though. I got a little choked up when Dewey died. Well, I saw it coming as soon as he was like, I'm not going in the elevator. Like, oh, he's dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's I knew dead. that. I was just like, but oh. like, I was like, fuck. Like, I just, I don't know. Yeah. And I think Dewey. the way they did it too, because. And there was like, a, there was like a lot of fucking jokes and like callbacks to the previous film that I thought were like really fucking funny. Well, because like with Dewey dying, that was kind of like the. I guess for the Scream series, he's the so-called Han Solo of the series. So they, yeah. they kind of... I, I was expecting one of those three to die. And I honestly kind of wanted Sydney to die. But, yeah. you know, that it worked. Maybe Scream <laughs> 6. No, I think they're done with them. I think yeah, they closed, yeah. they closed their arc out. What they, yeah, like... But there might be a Scream 6. It could be. And, and, yeah. and they really... Um, 
because what I liked about this one is, you know, you have your eras of horror films Mm -hmm. and the era, the era that I guess that's been going on the past uh, 10 years. They really play that into this film because like you know when uh it's like refined horror or like horror with meaning or um i think horror is more psychological now or even more just kind of it is more metaphorical Mm -hmm. if that makes sense you know versus shit you're saying like a24 type things as opposed to like the original, like Halloween and all that. Oh yeah, but yeah. I love it. I mean, Hereditary is one of my favorite They're films. Cool. It's honestly a drama, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I love this new era of horror. Yeah, because like how at the beginning when. But I felt like a fucking horror snob because when that little girl, I don't, I for, fucking forgot her name, but when she was like kind of naming off like it follows and Hereditary, what, blah blah, yeah. blah 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 blah, and I was just like, mm, shit. yeah, that's what I was gonna say because I feel like. <laughs> Because I feel like so called. Those are good movies. Oh, they are great. But I just felt like a little film snob. Because I think, yeah, there's a lot of so called horror fans that say they're horror fans, but the only movies that they watch is Hereditary, The Witch. Right. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so, but they really are like how, because I love how this scream is called Scream. Uh-huh. Because now that, because that's what a lot of horror, like with Halloween. Mm-hmm. So there was. And there was kind of like it knew what it was doing, you know, and, and so they kind of made fun of that also. In the yeah, because like, you know, with Halloween, it's like, you know, Rob Zombie did his remake and then there was another remake. Mm-hmm. So now when when they do that, you have to say, oh, Halloween 77 or Halloween 06 <laughs> or Halloween 2018. Yeah. So, yeah, now it's Scream 22. I will say, yeah. speaking of like. Well, Hall- like the Halloween that dropped in 2018 is H40 because there's yeah. Halloween, there's H2O and then H40. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what they call it because it's, it's 40 years post. I'm a big fan. I, I don't know for some. I'm a big fan of that deep fake shit like with Billy. Looking young, I I really like that. But honestly, you know, because they did it in he, Halloween. He looks he, he looks okay for his age too, like IRL. Oh uh, yeah, I, but I you really, know, they did it in Halloween too with him, and like they were like filming like it was back in the seventies. You know, the first scene of the new oh, Halloween. Yeah, and they did it with Luke Skywalker. I like that shit. I like to like bring it back. It looked, to me, there's still room for I perfection. I would say I don't give. A, I like the way it looks. I don't. I don't want it to be too real. Yeah, I like the way it looked. I thought that was really cool. That was. I, really, cool. I really thought. And James A. Janice, uh, dead meat. Kill count. That was dead so meat. That cool. was a fucking baddest. That they was did, like they did one over stab. I I spoiled that for Jen. I was like, this is the coolest thing. No, but I love that. That was I, badass. I love that, podcast that was so. Good. Good. YouTube, so. Yeah, so that's my like. It was dude, exciting was cool. to see it. I was like, oh shit! Immediately, I knew it. I was like, that's no wonder why they've been staying at that house and shit. I was yeah. like, man, that was cool. But good for good for him. Yeah, uh, I think that callback to Billy was cool. I like I really thought they were going to take a supernatural twist to it. Really? Like, well, because when Billy came, well, okay, I just I, thought it was going to be a I thing. I knew where... that little annoying girl was one of the killers because she was annoying to like begin with. But uh-huh. I really hadn't figured out that it was that girl's boyfriend until like the middle of the film. Juan yeah. guessed it right off the bat. Really? He was like, he, he's like, dude, that's the killer. And I was like, <laughs> really? You think? <laughs> it took me about halfway to realize it was a girl. Really? I yeah. knew that like right off the bat. The girl was like, oh, she's annoying. the fucking killer. But the dude, I didn't. I was like, man, way to go, Juan, yeah. you fucker. <laughs> Shout out Juan, wherever you are. And we did watch it at the Alamo. Did you watch it at the Alamo? No, I went to premiere. We went to Alamo. I was so sad. I wanted truffled popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's what I was like. I was excited to go to the to Alamo. So it's like I found I had COVID that day. So I was like, oh, what Oh yeah, it was that day. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I remember like Roy was like, "No disrespect, but are you gonna go?" <laughs> I was like, "No." <laughs> no, I didn't say. I said no disrespect. Is it cool if I go without you? <laughs> no, because you were because you you. I was like sick the whole day, so you're kind of like, are you oh. planning on going? <laughs> yeah, I did say that. <laughs> yeah, so that's why Juan went because they had the extra ticket. But I'm, that was cool. Did you have fun? Oh yeah, um, a little girls' night. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, I, mean, I like the movie. The first one's probably the okay. best, but I think that that's the second. That was the second best. No, I was just drinking beer. <laughs> uh, yeah, same. Oh. <laughs> I order candy. I get popcorn. I get like, it's expensive. Candies. That's the one problem. It's expensive. Oh, I love it. I like gross buttery popcorn and candy. And <laughs> I did like the part of that movie too. I did like the callback, like the teenage like feeling. You know, it's high school feeling. I did like that. I love. I like that feeling. Yeah. Like you're like young and you're like. 
committing sin and then you die from it. Like, <laughs> sure. I mean, that's basically what. Yeah. Those girls' uncle, what, what's his name? She she was in it. Uh, the original dude's sister. She came. She had a little cameo in it. Her children were the half black oh, twins. Yeah. Uh, what's his fucking name? <laughs> yeah, I, I like that little call. But the, the sister was. She was, and I liked it. Yeah. It was a good movie. Yeah, I liked it. So check out Scream. Just Scream 22, I guess. If you haven't, I don't know. I'm sorry we just spoiled it for you, but <laughs> get on the ball. It's a good movie. Yep. Check out Bradley's short film. Yes. Yeah. Is it just on the, what's your YouTube's name? Uh, it's just Bradley Garcia. That's all it is. Is so. it a link in your Instagram bio? Yeah, it is. I'll put a link yep. in. Well, right now in my description of all the podcasts. Is, is a link to it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, these guys don't even fucking pay attention to that shit. So. <laughs> Do you, am I link? Yeah. Is both my, of y'all is mother, my hair stuff? Both of y'all motherfuckers are, so <laughs> fuck y'all. Yeah. I still so. love you, right? Wow. I still love you, right? Not anymore, but <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so check out The Shadows Are Upon You. Oh, let me just say I'm sorry, because I've, I've been saying The Shadows Are Upon Us. No, you're good. My fault. I didn't realize I was saying the wrong the wrong name. But shadows are upon you. A short film by Bradley Garcia. Well, thank yes. you for giving me a shout out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for finally releasing it. Thank you for being our guest. He did not know he was the guest until he walked in today. They didn't so know we were doing this, so that's fine. Oh, you did know that. I didn't. I told you. <laughs> yeah. So. so, yeah. I mean, we're just really excited that we got to have somebody. This is like my first guest, I guess, so... Woo. Um, but also it was really cool to have a filmmaker. I, I would like to probably have future filmmakers on here, you know, other local fan, filmmakers or um, just movie fans, fans of film, you know, hit us up. I think it would be really cool to just get to know more people like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Also, The Laugh Now, Cry Later, February 11th at Studio 4. Be there. <laughs> and then this will be out the 29th. Uh, Snake Pit episodes 172 will be out Friday, and then this will be out Saturday. That day is Syllabus Day for our homies at the Loft. Yes. Check it out if you're listening that day. If not, so we'll be there you missed Friday. out. And then um, Jen shows in two February, weeks. February 11th. It's a Friday. It's two weeks, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Dress code is black, red, or pink. No such thing as overdressing. I will be like 90% sober. Than I was last time, so <laughs> we can talk. Yeah, we can have some fun. Uh, bring your girlfriend, bring your date, your partner, whatever you, it's whatever your preference party. is, Let's as get, long as they're an adult. Let's get dreamy. Yes. Okay. There you go, people.